one reason why you might feel like that you are struggling with awakening is because your mind, in a sense, won't accept it. And the reason for why it won't accept this awakening to your true nature is because it's, in some sense, too good to be true. That sounds a bit confusing because you might say, well, it's definitely not too good to be true. I actually want it. I'm totally willing to accept it. But what I mean by that is that our habitual tendencies of orienting to our experience in a particular way are so strong that they can, in a sense, override this recognition of our true nature. So let me make this very specific. If you are recognizing your true nature and you are relaxing this grasping to the objects and the interpretations of your experience and you settle back into what's already perfectly established, this aware, unbounded wholeness, this vast, empty awareness, which is taking the shape of your experience, then with that, there comes this peace, this sense of space, the sense of wholeness and interconnectedness. And if this is somewhat new to you, then your mind can react in somewhat funny or strange ways. In some sense, this kind of experience of peace is very surprising to us. We're really not accustomed to this. Because usually when we feel peace or happiness, it is because we have accomplished something. We have experienced something amazing. We have maybe eaten a delicious meal or watched a great movie or whatever it is that brings you peace or happiness for a moment. So we're always accustomed to something happening in our experience, which then allows us to feel peace and happiness for a moment. But with this recognition of our true nature, the strange thing is that we are not doing something. We haven't accomplished anything. We are not creating something. And so this peace is unconditioned. It is not the result of our mind doing something. And so when we experience this peace, the mind almost wants to reject it because it feels wrong to the mind to some degree. There is the sense of spaciousness and wholeness and as soon as there is a little thought of doubt or a slight feeling of discomfort, the mind will immediately latch onto that and say, well, yeah, but you have to do this and this and you can't just experience this peace, right? It's undeserved, right? there's, there's no reason to be happy right now. So in some sense, we have to get accustomed to this peace and joy that is inherent in our true nature. Another reason for why the mind can sort of reject this experience is because we feel in some sense that being at peace, feeling the sense of wholeness, makes us vulnerable in a strange way. And this is somewhat counterintuitive, of course, because why would a sense of wholeness and openness make us feel vulnerable? And this might very well differ for different people, but it can very often be the case that we have the sense that we always have to be sharp and focused and on the edge. We have to be ready for action. We always have to be switched on. We can't be spaced out. We have to be right here in the middle of it, right? So there's this kind of attitude of the mind, right? Where we feel like if we are feeling this peace and wholeness, this sense of interconnectedness, unboundedness and spaciousness, that this is somehow opposite to being focused and sharp and in the world. And so we feel like our defenses, our defense mechanisms aren't active if we are enjoying this peace, if we are actually recognizing our true nature and experiencing this wholeness and peace that is inherent in it. But this eventually is recognized to be an unwarranted fear. It's really not the case that the recognition of our true nature and the sense of peace and wholeness that comes with that 
somehow makes us less capable of functioning in a relative sense. Actually, the opposite is true. It is really possible to engage with life and engage with the world in a very open, interconnected and whole way and not lose your ability to focus and be effective in the way you deal with ordinary things and situations. It's really more of an upgrade to your operating system, so to say. You are now capable of really being with what is occurring right now. You can meet situations dynamically and a different kind of intelligence, a different kind of possibility of action becomes possible when true nature, when this awake, empty awareness is your operating system. So when you actually get the taste of that, you will see that things tend to work much better. And this neurotic sense of contraction and this fixation on thought didn't protect you at all. If anything, it just perpetuated the sense of vulnerability. It just kept you in this loop of believing that you are this being which always has to be on guard, always has to fixate on something, always has to be sharp and here and almost competitive. And this is really not necessary. This is really just blocking our own functioning and blocking our own peace. So when you shift into this different way of being, into this recognition of our true nature, it is then possible to live in a totally different way. And of course, just speaking about it won't do the trick. You actually have to make this recognition, this shift for yourself. And this is much easier than you might think. I recently uploaded a video which can be useful in getting a kind of a glimpse of this non-dual, whole, unbounded awareness. But if you have any questions on the topic, you can also write in the comment section or you can reach out to me through my website if you want to have a more in-depth and direct conversation on this topic or others. As always, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want to stay up to date with my latest videos and I will see you right here next time.